Captain Park's personal Lambda shuttle left the hangar at precisely 0705 the next morning. Apart from Park, Thrawn and Eli, the passenger list included Major Barris, three of the Navy troopers who'd been on the planet when Thrawn was running everyone in circles, and two stormtroopers, presumably also part of the group who'd seen the alien in action. There were also ten heavy-armed Navy troopers. If Park was worried about hard-eyed High Command administrators, he also wasn't taking any chances on his prisoner making a break for it once they'd reached the planet. Like everyone else in the Empire, Eli had seen hundreds of hollows of Coruscant. He'd also spent a couple of hours studying planetary maps the day after Park announced they were heading there. None of it prepared him for the breathtaking grandeur of the real thing. He gazed at the passenger cabin's repeated display, watching in utter fascination. The entire planet was surrounded by half a dozen rings of orbiting transports, passenger ships and military vessels, each awaiting its turn to head to the surface. Elsewhere, steady streams of outgoing ships created subtle fountains of light as they joined the various exit corridors for passage through the atmosphere, then scattered in all directions once they reached space. As the Lambda continued inwards, Eli watched the array of glittering star-like points that covered the planet slowly, resolve into buildings and towers. Still closer, and the grid lines of repulsor lift vehicles wove their packed way between the towering buildings during their intricate dance as they headed for a thousand destinations. A sobering thought occurred to him. Right now, he could probably see more vehicles that were on his entire home planet. The pilot eased them into one of the higher lanes, one that seemed reserved for military vehicles, They were close enough now that Eli could pick out specific landmarks. There was the Royal Imperial Academy, where the Empire's elite trained for the Army and Navy. Beyond it and to the east was one of the industrial areas, with tall towers spewing superheated wastewater vapour high into the atmosphere. In the distance, beyond that he could see an open area that was far below the tops of the surrounding towers, yet still many levels above the actual planetary surface. A landing area, most likely, probably for elite politicians or larger military vessels. He spotted the top of the Imperial Senate building in the other direction. He caught his breath. If the Senate was there and the Royal Academy back there, they weren't heading either to the Admiralty or the Imperial Security Bureau headquarters, which he concluded were the two most likely destinations. They were heading straight for the Imperial Palace. The Imperial Palace? No, that couldn't be, not for a single random blue-skinned near-human captured on an unnamed world out in wild space. There was no possible way the Emperor would even notice such an event, let alone take a personal interest in it. Yet that seemed to be exactly what had happened. Surreptitiously, Eli looked across the aisle where Thrawn and Park sat together surrounded by guards. The captain looked unnaturally stiff, as if he couldn't believe their destination any more than Eli could. The guards looked the same way, except that some of them looked quietly, but genuinely terrified. As well they should be. These were the men and women whose mistakes had allowed Thrawn to get aboard the strike fast in the first place. There were dark stories about what the Emperor did with people who'd failed him. But Thrawn himself didn't look frightened, or even concerned. All Eli could see in his face was that maddening confidence of his. Maybe Park hadn't told him where they were going. Maybe he hadn't told him about the Emperor's history or his reputation. Or maybe he'd told Thrawn everything and the Chiss simply assumed that whatever their destination, he would have things under control. Eli turned back to the display, the old stories of Chiss military power echoing through his mind. As far as he'd been able to ascertain, that whole culture and society had been lost from Republic knowledge for centuries, maybe even millennia. Now, suddenly... They'd re-entered history. Was Thrawn's level of confidence unique to him, or were all the Chiss like this? As someone who might someday be called upon to fight them, he hoped fervently it wasn't the latter. Eli had almost managed to convince himself that the group would merely be meeting with some palace official when they were ushered past a pair of red-robed and red-helmeted imperial guards into the Emperor's throne room. Even more than Coruscant itself, The hollows and vids Eli had seen of Emperor Palpatine paled in comparison with the real thing. At first glance, the Emperor didn't seem like much. He was dressed in a plain brown hooded robe with no ornamentation or glitz of any sort. 
His throne, while massive, was solid black and very simple, again with no ostentation about it, raised a mere four steps above the floor. In fact, the darkness of his robe made him almost disappear from sight into the black of the throne. It was as the group drew closer that the eeriness began. First was the emperor's face. The hollows and vids always showed him as a dignified older man, aged somewhat with the experiences of life and the cares of leadership. But the hollows were wrong. The face beneath the hood was old. Old and creased with a hundred deep wrinkles. Not ordinary wrinkles either, the kind Eli's grandparents had earned from years under the open sky. These creases were less like age and more like scars or burn tissue. The history stated that the Jedi traitor's last attempt to seize power had been an attack on the then Chancellor Palpatine. The histories hadn't mentioned that his victory over the assassins had come at such a terrible cost. Perhaps that was also what happened to his eyes. A shiver ran up Eli's back. His eyes were bright and intelligent, all knowing and utterly powerful. But they were strange, unique, disturbing, damaged perhaps by the same treachery that had ravaged his face. Intelligence, knowledge, power, and even more than with Thrawn, a sense of complete mastery over everything around him. The Emperor watched in silence as the party walked towards him. Park led the way, Barris and Eli behind him, followed by Thrawn and the Navy Trooper and Stormtrooper witnesses. The guard contingent Park had brought remained outside the door, six of the Imperial Guards having taken over their escort duty. It seemed to take forever to reach the throne. Eli wondered how close they would be permitted to approach and how Captain Park would know when he had reached that point. The question was answered as Park came to within five metres and the two Imperial Guards at the foot of the steps glided to positions directly in front of him. Park stopped, the rest of them following suit, and waited. And waited. It was probably only five seconds, but to Eli it felt like a medium-sized eternity. The entire throne room was utterly still, utterly silent. The only sound was the thudding of his pulse in his ears, the only movement the shaking of his arms in his sleeves. Captain Park, the Emperor said at last his gravelly voice neutral. I am told you bring me a gift. Eli winced. A gift? For the chiss of the stories, that would have been a deadly insult. Thrawn was behind him, and Eli didn't dare turn around, but he could imagine the expression on that proud face. I do, Your Majesty, Park said, bowing low. A warrior reportedly of a species known as the Chiss. Indeed, the Emperor said, his voice going even drier. And what, pray tell, would you have me do with him? If I may, Your Majesty, Thrawn put in before Park could answer, I am not merely a gift. I am also a resource, one you have never seen the like of before, and may never see again. You would do well to utilise me. Would I? the Emperor said, sounding amused. Certainly, you're a resource of unlimited confidence. What exactly do you offer, Chiss? As a start, I offer information, Thrawn said. If he was offended, Eli couldn't hear it in his voice. There are threats lurking in the unknown regions. Threats that will someday find your empire. I am familiar with many of them. I will learn of them soon enough on my own, the emperor countered placidly. Can you offer anything more? Perhaps you will learn of them in time to defeat them, Thrawn said. Perhaps you will not. What more do I offer? I offer my military skill. You could utilise that skill in making plans to seek out and eliminate these dangers. 
These threats you speak of, the Emperor said, I presume they are not simply threats to my empire? No, Your Majesty, Thrawn said. They are also threats to my people. And you will seek to eliminate all such threats to your people? I do. The Emperor's yellowish eyes seem to glitter. And you wish the help of my empire? Your assistance would be welcome. You wish me to assist the people who exiled you, the Emperor said. Or was Captain Park incorrect? He spoke correctly, Thrawn said. I was indeed exiled. Yet you still seek to protect them. Why? Because they are my people. And if they withhold their gratitude and refuse to accept you back, what then? There was a slight pause, and Eli had the eerie sense that Thrawn was giving the Emperor one of those small smiles he was so good at. I do not need their permission to protect them, Your Majesty, nor do I expect their thanks. I have seen others with your sense of nobility, the Emperor said. Most fell by the wayside, when their naive selflessness collided with the real world. I have faced the real world, as you call it. You have indeed, the Emperor said. What exactly do you wish from my empire? A state of mutual gain, Thrawn said. I offer my knowledge and skill to you now, in exchange for your consideration to my people in the future. And when that future comes, what if I refuse to grant that consideration? Then I will have gambled and lost, Thrawn said calmly. But I have until that time to convince you that my goals and yours do indeed coincide. Oh, interesting, the Emperor murmured. Tell me, if you served the Empire, yet a threat arose against your people, where would your loyalties lie? Which of us would command your allegiance? I see no conflict in the sharing of information. I'm not speaking of information, the Emperor said. I'm speaking of service. There was a short pause. If I were to serve the Empire, you would command my allegiance. What guarantee do you offer? My word is my guarantee, Thrawn said. Perhaps your servant can speak to the strength of that vow. My servant? The Emperor asked, his eyes flickering to Park. I do not refer to Captain Park, Thrawn said. I speak of another. Perhaps I assumed incorrectly that he was your servant. Yet he always spoke highly of Chancellor Palpatine. The Emperor leaned forward a little, his yellowish eyes glittering. And his name? Skywalker, Thrawn said. Anakin Skywalker.